Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor <clears throat> and I'm, uh, I am adjusting my volume. This is sponsored by Mr. B who hates it when I adjust my volume at the beginning of videos. I do it for him. Okay, first I wanted to start this off and show you, this is Molly Elmore's uh, feed. They were doing some filming with XRP Unleash, the documentary that's coming out uh, yesterday. And what was so cool is that they were filming in a loc one of the locations that was used for, um, uh, which Batman was it? Um, my favorite Batman. I actually, I tweeted this, uh, Dark Knight, the Dark Knight. That's the, the scene in the Dark Knight where they're in this place. Look how cool that is. There's Molly Elmore. Here's the producer um, and one of the guys working on the film. And then if you go up here, they got all kinds of cool effects that they were working with. That is neat. And then uh, let's go down and see, they did several, they put several videos out. Here's a, uh, they had a car on the set. The lighting in there is awesome. And then here's, let's see, car coming in. Man, I should have flown out to LA. It looks like they have some a lot cooler sets out there. Um, and then let's see if I saw some more. Um, this is one of the influencers that was on there. There's Molly Elmore again. Here's them talking to these people at the beginning. And then you can continue because they can always fix stuff. Sounds like you're talking to a really pet. cool. I hope they uh, I hope they do well on the on the film now. X Rippler Naveen Gupta predicts crypto boom via Corn Coin Telegraph. Corn Telegraph. Um, three components are essential: Bitcoin ETS increase stable coin adoption, Bitcoin ETS to fortify institutional trust, and then I saw this clip going around. Let me hit the refresh so that this thing will um, play. This is. Um, well, I'll just let you listen. Blue chip assets that would be dropping as well. In fact, here's the CEO of Kerox. He's talking about really the big show is in these other digital assets. Listen in. But, but I think it should also be put into perspective that these DTFs are kind of a sideshow to actually using digital assets to create value for everyday people and for everybody to to use the concept of you know digital value being fully digitally represented, increasing decentralization, creating new options towards you know a, a financial autonomy, that's the main thing, right? And then you say how how can we increase distribution of the asset and allow more people to benefit from product appreciation? It's good as well, but um, from in my perspective, it should not um, take the focus away from what is the most important. Is like how can we actually use fully digital representation of value and use that to create something where we have more options you know to to create and exchange value as individuals very interesting and then here's emmy yoshikawa she there were some um some emails from satoshi nakamoto from the early days going around in the last 24 hours and um emmy yoshikawa from ripple says interesting to see satoshi's comments on ripple ripple pay conceptualized by ryan fuger this is him, which was later infused into the XRP ledger. This is what Satoshi said. Are you familiar? Somebody asked Satoshi, are you familiar with Ripple? As trust systems go, Ripple is unique in spreading trust around rather than concentrating it. I've been asked at least four other times, have you heard of Ripple? And then Ripple is interesting in that it's the only other system that does something with trust besides concentrate it into a central server. So Satoshi loved some XRP. Back then it was called Ripple. It's crazy that Satoshi predicted this back in 2009. There will be a, an F ton of scams branding themselves as layer twos in the future. Oh yeah, think Luna. 
think all kinds of things. Then uh, Brad, it was announced that Brad Garlinghouse is going to be at Paris Blockchain Week, and there's a lot of heavy hitters that are going to be there with him. Here's some of the speakers. That's the CEO of Binance, CEO of Circle, Tim Draper, CEO of VanEck, CEO of LightSpark, C co-founder CEO of Masari. There's Brad Garlinghouse, ESMA. There's Stellar. Look, general manager at Shell. Oil, huh? Solana, JP Morgan. Ledger people are going to be there. There's Solana, Algorand. See who else. There's somebody else from Circle. There's somebody else from Ripple. Um, and that there's a Hedera down there, but a lot of high profile people are going to be there. Now, I wanted to show you this video. This video is also very interesting. Watch this. This is the, the sixth digital exchange in Switzerland. How far are you in creating your own CBDC? So central banks today uh, create two forms of money. One are banknotes and the other are bank accounts uh, at the Swiss National Bank. But those bank accounts are only available for banks, basically, to make payments among themselves. Now, a CBDC would be a tokenized form of this money. If we tokenize banknotes available for everyone, that would be a so-called retail CBDC. If we tokenize the bank accounts available only for the banks, that would be a so-called wholesale CBDC. And we are currently clearly focusing on wholesale CBDC. And together with uh, STX, we intend to issue a wholesale CBDC towards the end of the year for a limited uh, time. That, so that would be a pilot, but still it would be a live CBDC in a productive environment. How can wholesale CBDCs and blockchain technology be useful for the Swiss National Bank? So central bank money does not contain uh, counterparty risk. That's very different from uh, private money like commercial bank accounts or tokenized forms of private money like stable coins. If we issue a wholesale CBDC, so that would be a type of money without counterparty risk. And if you use that for settlement, that would clearly lower risks. And that is important, uh, especially for financial market infrastructure. That is, uh, for instance, systemically important for wholesale payments. You mentioned SDX there. Now, Switzerland has its own um, fully regulated digital exchange. Um, however, activity has been quite low so far. Do you think a wholesale CBDC could change this? So this is possible, but clearly not uh, guaranteed. Currently, SDX uses its own privately issued stable coin. If we were to issue a wholesale CBDC, that would re uh, reduce the risks in settlement and therefore also reduce the costs for the participating banks. So in that respect, it could be helpful. Are there any other use cases for wholesale CBDC? A lot of central banks are using uh, wholesale CBDC pilots now to investigate whether cross-border payments uh, could be made mm, more efficient and less things. costly than they are currently. And we have also experimented with cross-border uh, settlement in wholesale CBDC. Together with the Banque de France, we had a project called Chura, uh, which um, was, uh, I think, quite successful. And currently we have a very interesting project called Mariana, where we are not only uh, testing the cross-border settlement, but also the, the foreign exchange. So we built for that specifically together with the Banque de France again and together with the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Ooh, a decentralized exchange. Down. And the, what is special about a decentralized exchange is that unlike a traditional exchange where you have an order book where buyers and sellers are matched, in a decentralized exchange we have an algorithm. Wait, uh, Ripple has a decentralized, XRP Ledger has a de is a decentralized exchange a liquidity pool and both the buyers and the sellers they interact directly with the algorithm uh, to do their foreign exchange so this is something that has been invented in decentralized finance and we are now applying it to traditional finance for exchanging wholesale CBDC so you're talking now about an open blockchain about using DeFi protocols are you not concerned about the cyber risks so this is clearly uh, a risk that we have to take very seriously. Uh, so we make sure that we, even if this decentralized exchange is built on a public blockchain, we make sure that we can control access to all the relevant parts of this exchange. And uh, as you say, 
um, uh, cyber risks for CBDC in general, I think, are a very serious risk that, that uh, central banks will have to uh, take a closer look at. And that's something we do in a project called the Tubion. And there we are looking at, uh, at the prototype CBDC that would be protected against counterfeiting, even if the, the attacker would have a quantum computer. Right. Now, what are the chances of the Swiss National Bank issuing a retail CBDC? So the Swiss National Bank concluded that uh, at the current stage, Switzerland does not need a retail CBDC. We do not have a use case, and that might be different for other countries. But the arguments you really have, you usually have in favor of retail CBDC, like financial inclusion, improving the payment system, these are all factors that are not really relevant for Switzerland, and that is why we are focusing on wholesale CBDC. Great. Thank you. Very interesting clip right there. Now, um, just about everything he said, we've been covering. Ripple's been involved in just about every aspect of what he just said for the last five years while I've been covering this. Now, um, in DAIXRP.com, I'm going to talk to you about something I don't talk about much on this channel. Um, but I saw a tweet this morning, and, and I think that it's, it's worthy of addressing and, and telling you my, my thoughts on it, because I tell you what, this, it's a wild world we live in. But I'm going to go in, I'm going to sh- go over that in DAIXRP, um, and we'll, we'll kind of cover it. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Here we go.